Greetings, nerdlings. Today we're going to be starting our lecture about cell organelles. So today we're going to be discussing our nucleus right here. And then we're going to be discussing our ribosomes, which are these little yellow guys up here. So the little yellow guys are going to be the ribosomes. And here is our nucleus that we're going to be discussing today. All right. I'll see you in a second. All right, so we're going to begin with discussing the nucleus, and then we're going to move on to ribosomes. So the nucleus. The function of the nucleus is to contain all of the cell's genetic material, and that's in eukaryotic cells. It's basically the library of the cell. So most genes are in the nucleus. Some of the genes are actually located in mitochondria and in the chloroplasts. And if you remember from last year, we talked about the endosymbiont theory, that mitochondria and chloroplasts used to be their own entities, and they were eventually engulfed into eukaryotic cells. So that's why they both have their own genetic material. The size of the nucleus is approximately 5 microns, or 5 micrometers, in diameter. So the nucleus is separated from the cytoplasm by a double-layer membrane. This is called the nuclear envelope. The double membrane is fused in spots and that forms pores. The pores allow for large macromolecules and particles to pass through it. So what kind of molecules do you think are going to need to pass through the nucleus? Well, think about the process of protein synthesis. What molecule has to move out of the nucleus after the process of transcription and move into the cytoplasm for the process of translation into a protein? If you're thinking messenger RNA, then you're correct. So right here, we have our nucleus. This right here is going to be a nuclear pore. This is what the messenger RNA is going to travel through whenever it's going into the cytoplasm and exiting the nucleus. So as you can see here again, this will be our nucleus. After the transcript from the DNA is made out of the messenger RNA, that messenger RNA is going to exit the nucleus through a nuclear pore and into the cytoplasm. Once it's in the cytoplasm, it's going to begin translating into a protein on the ribosomes. So within the nucleus, DNA is organized into a fibrous material called chromatin, which is this guy right here. In a normal cell, it kind of appears as a big dense sphere or ball of squiggly stuff. So again, right here in the cell, is going to be the chromatin. Now when the cell gets ready to divide through the process of... If you said mitosis, you're correct. So once the cell begins to undergo mitosis, those chromosomes are formed. So the chromatin condenses into these chromosomes right here, which are going to divide in the process of mitosis. The densely stained region right here is called the nucleolus. The function of the nucleolus is to produce ribosomal subunits, and they form ribosomal RNA and proteins. So these are what pass through the nuclear pores to the cytoplasm, and they combine to actually form the ribosomes themselves. So the ribosome right here is composed out of ribosomal RNA and proteins. So ribosomes. You guys should all know by now that the function of ribosomes is to make protein, or protein synthesis. Ribosomes contain ribosomal RNA and protein, and they are composed out of two subunits that combine to carry out protein synthesis. So we have the large subunit right here, and we have the small subunit right here. Now some ribosomes are free-floating, and we call those free-floating free -floating ribosomes, and other ribosomes are attached to the endoplasmic reticulum. Those free ribosomes are suspended in the cytosol. They synthesize proteins that function within that cytosol. Bound ribosomes, meaning those that are located on the endoplasmic reticulum, synthesize proteins for export, meaning they're going to be moving out of the membranes. So the prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells have different ribosomes. They have different sized subunits and they also are composed of different proteins. So can this difference be useful? It can. 
So one of the things I want to address is the size of those ribosomes. In prokaryotic cells, the ribosomes are going to be smaller because prokaryotic cells themselves are smaller. And what we do is we call the large and the, the small subunit an S. The S stands for the Svedberg unit. This is used to express sedimentation coefficients of biomolecules and cell components. So basically, it's essentially an expressive speed. The smaller the S value, the slower the molecule is going to move in a centrifuge, meaning if it's really, really, really small, it's going to weigh very, very little. So the less it weighs, the slower it's going to travel to the bottom of a tube when you're centrifuging it or spinning it around. So it's the measure of how fast those molecules settle. Prokaryotic cells have a smaller Svedberg unit, while eukaryotic ribosome cells have a larger subunit. So that concludes our lecture for ribosomes in the nucleus. Stay tuned for our next cell organelles.